Alfred Henry Ackley was born in Pennsylvania in 1887. He showed great promise as a child, and his musician father personally tutored him before sending him to New York City to study music. From there, it was on to the Royal Academy of Music in London, where he became an accomplished cellist. Alfred then returned to the States to attend Westminster Seminary in Maryland, where he was ordained into the ministry in 1914. After pastoring a small church in his home state of Pennsylvania, Alfred was called to a congregation in California. It was there in 1932 that Alfred met a Jewish man to whom he began witnessing. No matter how much Alfred reasoned and witnessed to the man, the man adamantly resisted the Christian faith, saying, Why should I worship a dead Jew? That statement played over and over in Alfred's mind as he prepared his Easter message. Rising early to prepare for the day, Alfred flipped on the radio. As he was shaving, he was astonished to hear a popular liberal preacher in New York say, Good morning, it's Easter. You know, folks, it really doesn't make any difference to me if Christ be risen or not. As far as I'm concerned, his body could be as dust in some Palestinian tomb. The main thing is his truth goes marching on. Alfred wanted to fling the radio across the room. It's a lie, he exclaimed. His wife rushed into the bathroom asking, what are you shouting about so early in the morning? Didn't you hear what that good-for-nothing preacher said? Alfred replied. That morning, Ackley preached with great vigor on the reality of Christ's resurrection, and he did the same in the evening service. But later that night, he was still disturbed over his friend's question and the morning's radio sermon. Listen here, Alfred Ackley, his wife said at last. It's time you did that which you can do best. Why don't you write a song about it, and then maybe you'll feel better. Alfred went to his study, opened the Bible, and reread the resurrection account from Mark's gospel. As he began to relive the drama of the resurrection, a hymn began to flow from his heart and onto the paper. As Alfred finished the song, a calming reassurance came to him as he realized that no one could ever rob him of the joy of knowing that the living God lived within his heart. Alfred would never have dreamed that his experiences on that difficult Sunday would result in one of the church's most triumphant Easter hymns, He Lives.